whenever you're taking the SAT or any kind of exams in class. The exam's looking a little rough and you're about to be done with the first question and there's like 10 more questions to go. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you suddenly hear a student across the classroom flip to the second page. Then everybody goes, what the f And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to become that student. It's always fascinating and kind of frustrating on how we all learn the same thing and we are all in the same class. And it's entirely possible that that student is smarter than you, but it can't be that smarter. I can't say this for every single exam out there, but when it comes to the SAT, you don't have to be smart to solve all of these questions quickly. The only difference is that they know something that you don't know. And in today's video, we're going to go over what those two things are. And if it's your first time here, my name's John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT. And now you might be asking, John, what is the secret, right? Well, here's the thing. You have to understand the difference between you and me back in high school versus that kid who's flipping to the second page. So back in the day when I was starting with a 520 on the math section, this is how I was solving the question. So first I would read a question because you gotta know what's going on in the question, right? But the problem is I read the question, I read it two, three times because the first time around, I have no idea what's going on. And in about 15 seconds into the question, I would tell myself, I can't just be sitting here like this, let's try some things. So what I do is I first try out the first thing that came up to my head and realize that, okay, it's not really taking me anywhere. So I dump that thing, I jump ship, and I move on to the second thing, and I realize that, mm, kind of getting close, but not really there. Third thing, not really working out. Fourth thing, what do you know? That was the one. I eventually got to the answer, but it just took me way too long. And the problem is, by the time I got to the second question, that student is already on the last question. So fast forward a few months, when I started to score 700 plus consistently and start hitting 750 plus and even a perfect score of 800, this is how I would solve this question. I would look at the question and I don't even think about these things. I go immediately to the correct method of solving this question. The difference between the 500 John and 800 John is that the moment I saw this question right here, one, I immediately knew what the question was testing me on, and two, which method to use to solve this question. So the first key takeaway is, in order for you to be fast on the SAT and get a high score, you have to have the skill of looking at the question and immediately recognizing what you need to do to solve this question and what method slash equation to apply to this question. And now that's a lot easier said than done. And you could be saying, John, how can I get myself to that point where I see the question and I know exactly what to do? Well, it comes down to two things. First is going to be the concepts. So I always stress to you guys, SAT has 25 concepts. For the digital SAT, it has 24 concepts, just taking out complex numbers. But it all starts with concepts because if you don't know anything about trick, how are you going to solve trick questions? If you don't know how special right triangles work, then how are you going to solve it when the question shows up? That's why it's critical for you to have the 24, 25 concepts in place, and it's going to be lay a strong foundation on achieving that speed. And if you're not sure what the 25, 24 concepts are, I'm going to link it down below. I have created a 24 topic list right here. It's going to tell you what each of these topics are going to be and the order in which you're supposed to study them. And for most of them, I'm going to have a concept summary so that you can watch the video, learn exactly what you need to know for the SAT and start acing the SAT. Now, let's say you master the concepts, right? Then what's going to happen is whenever you come across these questions again, you're going to be capable of solving these questions, but you're not going to be quick at it. What I mean by that is whenever you see a question like this or a question like that, you're going to tell yourself, okay, I can think of maybe two to three things that I can try on this question. But the problem is we're trying to be quick, right? SAT has a time limit. So the concepts are going to take you halfway there, but the second missing piece is going to be the question patterns and keywords to look out for. If you have done enough SAT practice exams, you're going to recognize some of these questions. You're going to say, I have seen this question somewhere before with just a little bit of different words and different numbers. And the most important thing is that as long as you know what these question patterns are and what keywords to look out for, then you can see this question right here and immediately go into the correct method immediately. And by having these two things together is what allows you to solve these questions quickly by looking at the question and knowing exactly what to do the moment you see it. So to give you guys a couple examples, whenever you see a question that's looking like this, the first thing you should recognize is that whenever you see a sine and cosine in the same question, it's testing you something known as the complementary rule. And whenever you see this question right here, let's clean this up a little bit. But whenever you see a question with polynomial at the top and expression at the bottom, it's testing you on polynomial long division 
about 95% of the times. And whenever you look at the answer choices and you see that, oh, the answer choices have the same denominator as the expression shown on the question. If that's the case, polynomial long division is going to be 110,000%. Next, whenever you're working with a quadratic function and the question is giving you this structure right here, you recognize that, oh, this is actually a vertex form where A and B represents the X and Y coordinate of the vertex. You see what happened there? I just saw the question and I knew exactly what to look for. I didn't even have to read the whole question. My eyes just caught up onto the right things to look at. You might be asking, John, how can I train myself to identify these question patterns and bunch of keywords? Well, there's two ways to go about it. One is for you to take about 300 practice exams. If practice makes perfect and after you go through enough set of exams, your brain is going to catch on to these question patterns and recognize them on the future exam. But the problem is that most people don't have time to take 350 exams. And because time is the most valuable asset even in and because time is the most valuable asset even in high school, that's why I teach all my students. That's why I utilize the second method of teaching them the question patterns and the keywords as they learn the concepts. Even while you're learning the concepts that you need to know for the SAT, I also teach them, hey, you have to look out for these question patterns. You have to look out for these certain keywords. And this is why my students have such an amazing result because while they are learning the concept, they are also learning about the question patterns and the keywords that they need to look out for. An advantage to this is that these question patterns and keywords, these things take a while for you to integrate into your head. It's not some things that you see once and apply it to your next exam. Anyways, I don't want this video to be about me. So if you are running out of time and you're trying to raise your score quickly, I'm going to link accelerator down below. But to the main point of this video, if you're trying to be quick on the SAT, never have time issue again and get the highest possible score in your next SAT, you have to focus on learning these two things. You have to master the 25 or 24 concepts for the SAT. And second, you have to master the question patterns and the magic keywords. For all the concepts, you can go to the PDF that's linked down below. And for the question patterns and keywords, just take a whole bunch of practice exams and eventually you're gonna internalize them and recognize them on your next exams. Master these two things and I promise you, rest of the things will fall into place and you'll get your target score.